Wonder and Soup, and we are back once again for the vlog vlog on moving abroad from the U.S. It's a quick vlog um, going over details that are just enough to get you started on your journey. Remember to always do your own research, and if you can, visit where you want to move to just to make sure it is the right fit for you. With all that being said, this week's journey will be a move to Portugal. So Portugal's in the news, it's in almost every article on where to move. Uh, it's beautiful, the air is clean, the water is good, it has seasons. It's hot, it's winter. Or hot in the summer, cold in the winter rather. But, you know, I think all those articles and blogs and videos about it have driven the price up. So, with that being said, let's get into it. So, we're going to cover uh, some basics here. Land ownership, business ownership, citizenship, education if you have kids, uh, cost of living, medical care, and LGBTQI friendly. Let's start out with the first one. Most people want to move somewhere and they plan on making it a home, want to move own a property, own a house, and you can actually do that in Portugal and you do not have to be a citizen. Um, property is not cheap anymore, so keep that in mind. Essentially, what you would have spent in the States in a good sized city, four to five hundred thousand maybe for a house, two fifty and above, you're going to easily spend that in Portugal. But you don't have to be a citizen to do that. So there's that. Again, prices are going up and these are prices before pre-COVID-19 so there may be a slight dip over the next year or so so this is a good time to jump if you are thinking about it if you can get on a plane that will actually take you over there all right business ownership yes you can very similar to land ownership but it's not going to be easy or cheap similar to land ownership um you got to have a valid work permit a visa to open and operate a business, what well, actually you be in the country. So remember, you gotta look at the visas and make sure that they apply for, to you. We'll get into that a little bit later in citizenship. But yeah, it can be done. It's just gonna cost you. Um, probably just as much as it would've cost you to own and operate a business in the US. So don't go over there thinking it's gonna be like Southeast Asia or other countries where a minimal amount of money is gonna get you started in something it's not. So with that being said, Let's jump into citizenship. Uh, you can have citizenship or achieve citizenship. Um, there's actually quite a few ways that you can go about doing it. Uh, the ways that I think they would apply for a U.S. citizen is you can marry a Portuguese citizen. Uh, descent or birth. I don't know, maybe you got some cousins or maybe you got some family over there. I don't know. Uh, naturalization after six years of residence. So that's pretty much going to be the one that's going to apply for everybody. Sit still for six years and it's yours. Well, then you start the process. But hey, six years. It's, it's a mighty long time. And if all else fails, you can do what they call the golden visa. And you can buy a property that's over $500,000 worth in value. And you can get it after five years. Sit still for six. Then we go up to medical. Let's say you're up there, you get a little hurt, a little sick. It's ranked 13th in Europe overall. Um, medical coverage is offered. You have it via the National Health Service, and you can also have it via private insurance. It's not bad. It's better than the U.S. It's going to cost you a little bit. Uh, if you do do private, and I'm almost thinking that since you're not a citizen yet, you're going to have to pay for private. So put that in your budget, and I would estimate um, a couple hundred if you're a couple, a family, a couple hundred a month. Uh, I do believe you can prepay that for the year. So that's not bad. Not bad at all. Um, I know as a single woman at the time when I had insurance with my last company, my premiums were about that much for one person. So... Um, Hey, a whole family every month is cheap as heck. Education. If you got kids, great news. You can go to school. They can go to school free. Um, state school. Now they also have private school. And you may want to consider that. 
for your kids there. And if it's private, it will cost you. Add that to your budget. And LGBTQI friendly. It is. Hunty, if you're going to be gay, this is the country to be gay in. Portugal is the, the gay world. The gay, I mean, it is the gay country. Uh, and it's the gay standard. <laughs> so go to Portugal, be out and about, be happy, be you, and you will be fine. Last thing, cost of living. As I mentioned before, cost of living has went up in Portugal because there's been so many articles saying this is the place to go. And it's really the land ownership and rent that has went up. So if you rent a property there, say a one or two bedroom, a one bedroom is going to run you easily a thousand, twelve hundred bucks for a decent one bedroom. Two bedroom, twelve to fifteen, possibly two thousand, anything above that. Three bedrooms and above, you're looking at two thousand dollars a month. That is a lot to me to rent. Uh, for those costs, to me, I could have stayed in the U.S. Um, I want to go somewhere where there's going to be a, a savings. That's me. If it's not an issue for you, then it, this is nothing. Food costs are about average. They're lower than most of Europe, so you should be okay there. I think coffee is about 60 cents a cup. You can make it at home, too. Fruit, veggies, things of that nature, a little bit lower than most of Europe. So your savings are going to come into play there. I am a budget traveler, so those things matter to me. Um, I have a cap on what I want to pay for rent. How much I, if I want to stay there, how much I want to pay you to own a property, uh, how much I want to pay for my weekly grocery bill, my monthly grocery bill, electricity, and things of that nature. So do your research. And if you go to our blog at wonderingsoup.com, um, I have links to all the information that I'm discussing and sharing with you now. And some of those links actually take you to calculators and things of that nature. So again, do your research. But Portugal is beautiful and it's on our list. So, even though I'm saying all of that and saying I'm a budget traveler, there are definitely some plus sides to Portugal. Hopefully, this information helps you along your journey. I am Kat with Wandering Soup. Do a follow, subscribe, like, share. www.wanderingsoup.com. See you next week in the new country that we are moving to.